It ain't ballistic gel, it won't tell you much, but watch closely when we put two rounds into a steel target. The first one is lead. The second one is a non-toxic metal we have only touched on. It's zinc, powdered, compressed, and now sold as a varmint round. Here's firearms expert Andrew Venables to tell the story of zinc in ammunition. This is actually just a small sample I could get together in the time available of other than lead bullets. Just a quick sort of historical thing. If you have a look at these, you can see they're different colours. You can see that's more of the pure copper type bullet. This is more of the bronze gilding metal type bullet. The design of these is to give virtually 100% weight retention, but some people prefer lead bullets because they fragment. And when you get fragments, you might get a quicker kill technically on the animal. When we look at this little board here, we see that there's an odd bullet. There's an odd case here. And this we can describe as the start of the zinc thing. This is a copper jacket, which was wrapped around a zinc bullet with a frangible front end. And on impact, the copper jacket and the front end of the bullet split into multiple fragments, leaving this little zinc barrel to give a little bit more penetration. Let's get back to the main plot. If we look at these rounds, and we take the one in the middle, this is actually the Barnes Varmint grenade, the bullet that was zinc compressed powder with a copper jacket on it. And when this hits anything, with a lot of liquid in it, like flesh, it absolutely dumps all the energy and blows up. Great, wouldn't that be great for killing deer? No, because it dumps its energy terribly quickly. If you shot a fallow buck on the shoulder with one of these, even in the correct caliber, like 243, it would probably just blow up on the skin and the outside of the, collar, of the, of the shoulder blade and not penetrate. This is a varmint bullet for shooting predators and varmints. That's, but that's just the start of the zinc story. These little things here, happen to be in 223, are again compressed zinc bullets. You couldn't call it full metal jacket because there isn't the jacket on it. They use this in shooting cinemas in Europe. It's designed to just shoot basically at a very close range target and produce a hole in the screen so that you can film it. Actually, I've tested these out to 100 mm meters. They're quite accurate. If we look over here, these are zinc powdered core with a copper jacket. The end two, it's just compressed powdered zinc. All right, zinc and copper actually, this one mixed together. Quite an unusual bullet because it really all falls apart on impact. They're for use in military situations when you don't want full shoot through, or you're in an indoor shooting range situation where you don't want lead particles flying around in the air. They use the pistol version of those for air marshals. You don't want to shoot a hole through the side of the plane whilst you're trying to shoot the suicide bomber in the plane. Brands you probably heard of, Fiocchi, again, this is a leadless, full metal jacket, military style round, and it's a zinc inner. It's very accurate. We've shot this out to 800 meters. It shoots extremely well. On to the hunting thing. If you want alternative choices to the copper or mono metal bullets that we've been seeing as the apparent first drive of lead free, zinc expanding front end of the bullet down to that rim that you can see there. And then the rear of the bullet is designed to stay as a barrel penetrating through and give you that extra penetration for an exit for the blood trail you may want to follow to where it's gone. This is the end of a project which has been lasting at least 130 years. In terms of bullets and the development, once we 
finished shooting muskets and we'd invented rifling and we started trying to drive lead balls or lead mini bullets as they were called more quickly. As soon as we got over 1500 feet per second the lead fouling was disastrous, it stripped on the rifling and it wasn't working. So we had to wrap our lead bullets in copper. Okay, this is, this is the jacket of the bullet. Sometimes it was copper, sometimes it was gilding metal. In the Second World War, they ran out of all sorts of stuff like lead. They actually had steel bullets with a little bit of tombac or nickel wash on them. All sorts of things have been fired, but this is really old technology. Why are we still using it now? Why do we imagine there's nothing better than a soft lead core wrapped in copper, which as everybody wants flatter shooting, faster, harder hitting rifles are becoming increasingly less reliable. A company called Nosler in the United States in 1947 thought, hey, we can make a better bullet than this. We're gonna make a bullet with a separation in the jacket. RWS H mantle, the same kind of thing, the Nosler partition bullet. And they created a bullet with a jacket a partition in the middle, a hard, higher antimony based lead core locked in at the bottom with the jacket being bent in a bit there. And at the front, they kept that traditional. They kept it a soft point with soft lead. And when it hits an animal, this lot blows up partly fragments and you normally end up with just that much left, this part of the bullet actually exiting from the animal. All this lot has blown up, fragmented. In about 1985, the Barnes Bullet Company and Fred Barnes perfected a system of actually effectively soldering the lead into the copper, so like a bonded core bullet. Even those bonded core bullets, the magnum calibers that were coming out then, were making them fail. They were blowing up. He thought, why don't we just do away with the lead altogether? It was done to give us a bullet that could be driven at f much higher velocities, retain almost all of its weight after expanding on impact, and you've seen plenty of images of the expanded copper type bullets or the gilding metal type bullets. So back in 1990, these came onto the market and over a period of 10 years, they were further developed, they're continually developing them now, and they're getting better and better. The patents have expired on this principal technology. Many companies are making this type of bullet now. They also make bullets like this, which are designed to fragment here so that you get these things like blades breaking off and forming three or four or five separate fragments. Zinc bullets first hit the market in 2010. The front of the bullet is a powdered zinc recompressed together and when it hits the animal, whether it's a hollow point or a ballistic tip, this front end actually fragments quite spectacularly and can give, with all good bullets they need to be put in the right place, but can give vast kills as these can. But if you're not in quite the right place, you may still get a fast kill with this because there's fragments coming off it. You're the base of it is a hardened zinc and when this front end has effectively blown off, this back end will carry on penetrating and generally give you an exit wound. So you're getting the best of all the worlds, really. So we have so much choice now. When I started shooting 45, 50 years ago, my choice was a copper bullet with some lead stuffed in the middle. Now look at it, it's brilliant. For more about WMS Firearms Training, go to wmsfirearmstraining.com.